right. The, it's August. Oh, man, that's crazy. Um, uh, Aries Cloud Asian Python maintainers meeting, Linux Foundation meeting, Hyperledger meeting, antitrust policy and code of conduct. Let's be good. Um, I might as well set to edit, but let's, I think we just want to jump into PRs first, and then, uh, and then we got to get into um, planning work. Just opened. I saw this one. This is very similar to another one we had um, that added another, um, that added, you, you mentioned that this adds a, oh, the side effect. Wait, you took this off. Yeah. Um, so I, I realized that where the uh, the key list update was being sent from, it didn't need to happen right then. So I just moved it to after uh, when the connection record was getting saved originally anyways. Uh, so it, uh, yeah, it was able to keep the same number of webhooks and saves that were taking place. Uh, that's exactly what we did the last time this happened. <laughs> Raise the same point. Okay. Um, yeah. That, yeah. Anyway, exactly the same. So got it resolved. That's good. Yeah. We just, um, we were winding up with an extra webhook in the last time. It was a, a change Kim made. Um, and yeah, we were able to alter it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll get this reviewed and merged. And we definitely want to get it updated. Um, Sherman, do you mind if I assign this to you? Yeah, it's fine. Good. All right. Okay, this one. Um, where where are we? Okay, so we've got some tests failing, and he's still got this mer marked as a. I assume we want this. Um, we haven't talked explicitly about this, but I would assume we would want it. That's a pretty significant savings. Um, have we resolved the regex change? So I, I haven't looked at this in depth yet. So I've, I've just been trying to follow up along with the conversation. Okay. Um, but I, that was the only thing that was like kind of a little strange to me was the post-processing. Yeah. Um, I think if we, uh, I think this has already been said in some of these comments, I haven't reviewed them recently, but I, I think if we wanted to go with a faster JSON utility like this, I think we should just accept that there's not going to be white space and then make sure that that's not a problem as opposed to inserting them back in after the fact. Or if it's going to be a, a significant issue, like in the case where we actually want the white space when we're displaying it to a, a user to be human readable, um, then just not using yeah. the utility like altogether, I guess. Um, is, is anything serialized and then encoded or encrypted in a way where the white space would affect a hash or a checksum or something? Well, that's exactly what's happening. That's the, the question raised here. I think AFJ has some yeah. issues with it. And and because we were putting in white space, it was um, causing some issues. What I don't know is the defensive way to do this from a coding perspective is to just deserialize it and try the, ba <coughs> the base 64 or whatever, just try the try the encoding and only if it fails, do the decode, add white space and so on. So in other words, assume that it's just gonna be right and then only take action if it turns out not to be. And that would basically, you know, prevent, allow us to do the optimal thing. So uh, maybe this is something to be brought up. It would be nice if someone could well, maybe we'll bring it up tomorrow and see if we can get a, an AFJ developer to talk about it with us and see where this happens. I assume this this 
is in the envelope handling. Um, but it's it's unfortunate that it just sort of says, oh, it happens. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, no, I'm talking to be specific to like a public key or something where you can't, like if you're just deserializing it and it looks weird, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering if there's anything that in the public eye would be a problem. Because if we like, right, if we serialize it without white space and then make a checksum and then send both and then they deserialize it with white space and then the checksum doesn't match, and now all of a sudden both sides are freaking out. That's like the, the situation. But yeah, in all of those you right. could recover and just say like the community could just agree, let's try both. But I'm not sure that's <laughs> exactly also yep. an elegant solution. Is that worth the speed savings? So Maybe? I, I think I think what should be happening in the cases where we are actually doing um, um, doing computations over these values where whether there's white space or not does impact the result. Uh, like the for example, a signature over a uh, uh, a JWS in the did exchange request, for example, in the attachment of the did exchange request. Um, the signature should always be verified over what was sent, like without any decoding or anything taking place beforehand, because then right. that should ensure that whether there's white space or not, yeah, uh, we're right. we're verifying the value that was originally signed. Right. The, yeah, I mean that makes more sense. The issue that was in AFJ previously, and in, in the version that we were testing against when we discovered this issue, was I think unintentionally decoding it and then encoding it again and then checking over that value, uh, which is where the white space issue became apparent. Um, I think if we we weren't in a position where we could update AFJ and and you right. know, check the differences, um, but I, from what I looked, from what I saw when I looked recently, it, it seemed like at least that particular issue had been corrected. Um, but it still looked like it might be dropping padding on on the uh, oh yeah the base sixty four value before trying to verify, which I still think is maybe not the right choice. Um, but I think what's happening on the Akapai side, why we're not seeing this issue anymore when we're interacting with AFJ is we've stopped including padding on the um, on the JWS, the encoded payload uh, in the did exchange request. Okay. So I think really the only thing that needs to occur community-wide, if it's not already clear, I guess, is just to clarify that whenever we are verifying signatures over encoded values, make sure that we're taking, that we're using the payload as it was delivered yeah. uh, to avoid any of the white space versus no white space issues. Okay. But I think if we, I mean, in theory, if we make this change and then try um, Aries Asian test harness before we merge it, um, we should be okay. So yeah. let's let's let him finish and then make sure we do that before merging. Okay, I can add some notes to this. I've written a bunch of things down. Um, yeah, like the speed up is pretty impressive. Holy crap. <laughs> well, I mean, the speed up, he still hasn't verified how much is actually on the Akapai side, right? Like 30% increase, it could be 25%. That could just be on the test side, right? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like he, he's saying, oh, the tests are running 30% quicker, but 25% of that, you know, right. 20, could just doing. be on the test side. Um, yeah. Is there, can we do something that, allows a fallback to the existing code. I'm, I'm kind of paranoid that some teams aren't gonna have the resources to change their side of things, right? So that they should still be able to deploy it um, with the original, like what they're expecting. I guess I just get a little paranoid that it's like, great, we got this thing. Um, it works on all our projects even if it works in the test harness is okay, that there's other teams that are going to be like, cool, we're going to deploy this thing. And then like, why did our thing go crazy? Because they're expecting it to behave a certain way and they've coded it 
to expect. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Is that they're, I don't know. It'd just be nice to be able to flag it and say, you know, if you deploy it with <laughs> another configuration flag, right? Um, uh, <laughs> to, to say, just continue to use the built in JSON stuff, which shouldn't really be too big of a deal if we have this kind of uh, utility class or interface or whatever that is yeah. doing the actual lifting, right? Um, yeah. But I, I, I don't know if it's an issue or not, but maybe, you know, if it goes out to the community, maybe someone will be like, we've got stuff running that we don't want to or can't spend time changing. I, I don't know. Okay. But I, I see this commonly in, in, in Python libraries. They'll offer you the ability to swap out for a different JSON utility. And it's usually by installing uh, like a pip package extra alongside it. Um, and then it, it's intelligent to know, enough to know that if the package is available, then it'll use that. If, if it's not, then it'll fall back to the default. Right, um, but we have a thousand config flags anyway, so we're just adding another one. That would be easier. Right? Well, I'm not saying it would be by config flag necessarily, but by deployment, by specifying like what extras are installed in your deployment, you could configure which JSON module was being installed. But the, I, okay. Point taken though that that's still another configuration parameter, whether it's a command line argument or not. I guess that it, 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 would be if it was similar. Uh, go ahead, sure. Emilio. Uh, the last sentence from Daniel was basically what I was going to say. I'm, I, I see what um, Jason is saying. I'm a bit, I would be a bit wary of adding yet another configuration parameter just for, for backwards compatibility. Uh, the main issue being if we do it, then we have to maintain it. We have to maintain it until God knows when. It's tech debt that we are just basically building into our own solution for potentially an indefinite amount of time. Um, if there is like a drop-in replacement strategy, like Daniel was mentioning, like, oh, if you want to use a different serializer, just install a package. You know, you would have the your Akapai image install this additional pip package and magically it works. I haven't done that. I'm just going by what paraphrasing what Daniel said, that would be probably a, an okay uh, scenario. Um, right, but in I, this I, case, would, wouldn't, aren't, so isn't the two options, the built into Python, not imported and OR JSON? Yeah, I, I think we'd have to have a way for them to deploy and remove. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. we wanted, we want to say the base deployment is OR JSON, and they, but we need to have, I guess, a path for someone to say, "Great, I don't want that because it's messing up my, whatever." And the so, way he's the way he's implemented the JSON util class, basically, we're putting a flag in there that says use OR JSON, which is imported no matter what, or use the built in. I I think I think what this is going back to what Andrew was suggesting one of the comments which is what Daniel was saying, which is like, we have the utility class, which is just basically masking with which JSON serializer we use. And the utility class does, okay, I'm gonna check if OR JSON is imported, I'm gonna use it. If it is not important, I'm just gonna use standard JSON. And, and, and then all we need to do is have unit tests for that utility class in case it, external library is imported or not imported and potentially the post-processing. Uh, the post-processing being something that we definitely need unit test. Uh, what Andrew was mentioning, I think, is uh, it's kind of like important. Uh, regex processing is prone to error. So, at the so, very least, we need very strong unit test validating that we are not doing crazy stuff. But there's still a margin to, 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 to like something that could happen in there, but we're limiting at least our problems. So, is there are there bugs or are there not i guess would be my point the, like is, is this is the current stuff we have right or wrong the question is interoperability yeah, Evidently, like, some some workarounds were done at some point in the past in some places for some scenarios that we don't know about that may have been done not bugs not but deliberate workarounds we don't know where they are we don't know why they're there would, wouldn't it be better to just like this and they may not even be there <laughs> wouldn't it be better to like just discover where the workarounds are i mean it's going to be painful but get them fixed 
uh, having to rely on like space. Um, exactly. N n nomenclature different in JSON seems like a, a, a very bad thing to do. Like I I realize like the hashes of the of, of the results change. That's yep. normal. It's a it's a new character. But as Daniel said again, it's like you sh whoever is sending back and forth information should just like take it as is and deserialize it as is, like not using the spaces or not. Like it shouldn't make a difference. You're just getting a, a payload. You're hashing it and unhashing it. If it has spaces, good. If it doesn't have spaces, good. I, I'm I'm oversimplifying. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is like trying to code around this type of edge case seems like a, a recipe for disaster to me. Yeah. I don't know. For me, like this utility, like I think the easiest way is to add, if we really want to do what um, Jason Sherman is saying is we just add a, a new config slow JSON <laughs> and it uses the old instead of the new and that and that should keep everything the same, I would think. Yeah, and you could, you could code a very simple um, case in the in the util, right? Yeah, that's that's potentially a way to manage it. At least I think I think it's worth considering to put that option in, and yeah. then leave it in there for month, like a, a couple of months, and be like, has anybody noticed or cared, or has this mattered? <laughs> yeah, and and, and then if any if everybody goes, we didn't even know this change happened. Then yeah, you can go great, and if you do, then. You go, oh, okay, well, it looks like we've introduced bugs and people have had to manually revert. So let's discuss it then. Yeah, and we could say we strongly recommend not using this flag unless you really have to. And then. Yeah, and let, and let, and let errors have introduced or unless, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's an interesting way to. Okay. Well, well, let's what what, what if gotta... somebody, I, I still don't, don't like the flag problem being that we can automatically deal with it with the with the conditional import there like right. what, what 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 if tomorrow uh, i come up with it? a new library that has some benefit for me and i want to use that all i would have to do is just like add the conditional import for that library in the utility class have the library installed and that works transparently versus having another flag that controls what to do right Right, but I can document that I've got another flag that says just use this flag. Otherwise, I've got to say, oh yeah, make sure you go update the requirements document before you the thing before you use it. Um, you can't use the um, container images because they've got it automatically imported. So you have to go create your own image. I mean, it's it's way more work for them to have to figure out how. Not I mean, in, er, sorry, uh, considering where they should be able to put in any JSON library they want. No, I don't Italy? think so. no. I don't think so. I just want to, I just want to explore. Make yeah, sure I don't think so. Um, I guess if, if there's a way we can do it transparently where nobody should notice, like, yeah, yeah, there you go. Like, do we put that back in the white space? Hmm. Let's see, I see. I'm going to try running these tests again just to find out what's going on. Yeah, they, they might have been broken. We had those hiccups with the, uh, yeah. the ledger and stuff is probably right. I don't know if they got ran again after that. Um, oh, the uh, the first set did get run again and it fixed. Oh, oh OK. It's nuts, this. So how, how would you do a negation of a, of a library simply? Because I'm assuming most people just grab the uh, Aries image, yeah, you would have to my image and say, "Great, cool." You'd have to build Boy, your own image. Right? So, I mean, then maybe that's one way we can check to see is if we have two images and how many times the. Uh, I don't want to go there. One, because <laughs> that's the thing is, if you put in a feature flag or whatever, we have no way of collecting any information if anyone's yeah, actually yeah. doing anything. It's exactly. kind of yeah, it's it's a little little tough so 
you know, it could be that we have this toggle that's never really used um, without trusting people to report back and say, no, I still need this or I don't. Um, I don't know. I don't know. My, I guess my thing is, is if, if nothing's actually broken, maybe we shouldn't touch it. Um, and until we know the performance is actually like, like I say, like, if all of it, uh, the tests are performing great because we do 99% of these comparisons are done in the unit tests, then, it, you know, we're potentially putting out something that's going to break things for uh, like a we can't do something in the tests and not use it in that. Like the tests have to match what we're doing. We're putting out. I think we should put this out. I, I'm not, I don't think there's a question of that. I just think we, I'm okay with leaving somebody with a path that's easy for them to use to to be backwards compatible um, sure. that's, yeah yeah um uh i have not looked at this one this is ready to go um we can update the branch but um Looks pretty simple. Are we okay yeah. with this one? I think this is consistent with recent or or with other changes that have been made just to to make the responses consistent across different uh, admin API endpoints. I think this one is even probably more of a benign change because it's on the send ref reg def, which is usually not going to be an endpoint that's going to be called directly by the admin I mean, API. Get called directly, yeah. So yeah, I think this is fine. Okay, I'll uh, now and we might as well do that. Okay, well, good. Um, where does this one sit, Daniel? Oh, yeah, this is kind of hung up. You stepped into a hornet's nest. Yeah, unintentionally. Um, <clears throat> I actually haven't reviewed the uh, comments from Tim yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it's... I, I mean, this is one where you could put it in out of band or you can put it in the other. So I don't think it really matters a whole lot. Um, anyway, take a look when you get a chance, but it's not a high priority. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, this Can you one summarize what that is. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. Um, basically, um, so some person for Ontario added this OOB problem report and then their, their change had rotted, um, while it waited to be reviewed and they, and Ontario couldn't have anyone look at it. So Daniel just, um, modernized it so that it fit in, but then there's the question of is the is the problem so it's basically reporting a problem when you're in out of band and when you're doing an out of band now out of band is just the invitation the protocols you're actually executing are either the um are either the you know the the did exchange or connections where you're establishing a connection or something like um, presentation request when all you're doing is a single operation. And I think the problem there is, um, um, and, and so the question goes, is the problem to do, when you're reporting a problem, is it an out of band problem or is it the protocol you're trying to execute via the invitation? So that's the, uh, the question. and. Tim is basically saying, oh, well, we were trying to do it for a, um, uh, you know, for a timeout, basically. Oh, we only wanted the invitation to last a certain amount of time. Well, A, there's no way to respond 
<laughs> or there's not many ways to respond, um, but it still gives out the question of, is that an out of band expiration? I guess so, but is it that you were invited to do a, uh, it, if they respond late after it's exp expired, they would be sending a did exchange message. So their context would already be did exchange. So chances are what you really want to send back is a did exchange problem report saying expire. Yeah, so, hey, got, I got you, yeah. Yeah, so that's the, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Took me a while to get to the. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is our, this is definitely our hottest priority is, is, is getting this done. Jason, I think you're pretty happy with it at this point. Uh, I mean, it follows the happy path. It, it interacts with Akamai properly. Um, the, the the questions really come from all these unit tests that appear to be random objects that, that I don't know whether we need to support and are realistic or not. Um, Andrew has chimed in a couple times with me on the side about <clears throat> things that are basically you're not gonna we're not gonna see them either. They're 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 completely obsolete, like a like a base fifty eight key, and it's the exact same thing you saw. And the exact thing that um, somebody's messaged me on the side, trying to get. Yeah. Um, who is that? Mergy. Um, uh, Mergy, that's right. Yeah. So um, they've been messaging me, asking um, about, uh, and finding some issues, which are totally valid and things I need to change. Um, Daniel, I really, really appreciate your review on that. Um, I've also spent time updating some of those. Um, sections of the code, definitely some suspicious things that I either need to better document or clarify or remove. Um, so I appreciate you pointing those out. Um, yeah, and then, and then the question is now that I've now that I've done this once, do we need to really look at restructuring um, things at a more did method level? Like for the, the, the one that Daniel pointed out is that the Askar has a create did method, which wants to include the which wants to generate the bear key the method itself wants to generate the bear key but for did peer two i need the bear key first yeah yeah so that i can then make the did doc so that i can then save the did you can't yeah. make the did without the bear right so um that's where i've added another path through that code that looks quite odd <laughs> um and that was something that that was pointed out so yeah i'm hoping to to maybe we can talk about that as a follow-up but for now i'd, I'd rather i get the thing in that works with some tests that can prove it works um, and then um, explore potentially more general solutions in the future. Okay. All right, so keep um, pushing on that. Let's see if we can get this out and merged. Um, this is probably, you know, up there is a high priority with um, the push to get unqualified dids out of the world in the next few months. This is crucial to um, the Aries community to have this. Yeah, absolutely. No, um, between Mergy's observations and Daniel's comments and maybe a little bit of help from, from Andrew on what the test cases are valid or not. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to, to move fast, but yeah, it's just been trying to explore which of this stuff is irrelevant. Um, all the histories and, and that stuff. So that's where the, the hangups have come from. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then this, these two are both um, valid. Oh, yeah, all three of these are, are new and valid. I have not looked at this one. I see Daniel, you've responded and, and Marcus, I think Marcus is his name, right? Or, uh, Mattis, 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 something, Mattis. yeah. Um, responded, so hopefully we can get that um, there. This is probably, um... yeah, I think that failure was from the uh, the ledger being uncooperative. Yeah. Um, this change, I, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to go this direction that that's being proposed in this PR. Um, and I think some of the issues actually arise out of like a slightly deeper problem. And Mattis had a very 
reasonable response in saying that the intention was to just get it working and like reduce the amount of changes because it is a deeper problem that's causing the the incompatibility. Can you, uh, can you explain so, it? Uh, it's been a minute. Let me review this real fast. So he recently we added the verification key strategy um, pluggable component. So if you have multiple verification keys, multiple public keys associated with your did, um, yeah. you can have a, a different strategy for picking out which one of those keys should be used for doing stuff like signing uh, JSON-LD credentials. Um, so this PR is adding like uh, the inverse operation. How do we get, um, how do we get, I'm trying to remember now. How do we get the verification key? So the actual key material based on a passed in did and verification method ID. Um, and he's put that into the same verification key strategy component that was added, mm -hmm. um, making it a, a pluggable thing so we can um, you know, help ACPI know where the keys are to validate, to verify a JSON-LD presentation that we've received. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, there's some weird stuff that I think arises from just ACPI weirdness. Uh, for instance, the only way to get a handle to like the verification keys by having a did info object. Um, and there's a one-to-one -one mapping between dids and ver keys right now. And it, so the interface is just a little bit confused, I would say. Um, and I, I have the itch that there's probably a better way for us to address this, but I haven't dedicated enough thought into coming up with a better solution than what's being proposed. Okay. And and the the one to one is the big problem. There should be a yeah. one to many did to yeah. bear. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So even if we just made a a change in this, okay, I say just, but this would be a pretty significant change if we made it so that the keys uh, that are getting inserted into the ASCAR database, if we made those be identified by a verification method ID by a did URL, basically. Yeah. That would solve the problem, uh, but that's not currently how keys are identified in the wallet right now. So it's, uh, yeah, it would be a, uh, right. not a casual so change that are, we would make, I, are, I guess. So the keys are extracted from the did. Yeah. Okay. So we need Andrew to weigh in on what Askar should do about this. Yeah, I would I would appreciate anybody else's brain power if you've got some to uh to spare to think about this issue and and give input. I just I probably ought to spend more brain power on it. I just haven't yet. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. Um just for fun, I'll run the failed job, but just because I suspect it's again, we got to find out if it's the same problem, the right. Um, all right. This one. Uh, I think this one's ready. The failing tests, I think, are, are again, the ledger issues. I think we just need to do a trigger rerun. Um, and then this should be good for review. All right. Um, and then and Jason, I'll put your name on it again. Although this is LD proof, hmm. well, yeah, it, it's uh, 
is there anyone else that can, because I don't think Jason's even ever looked at LD proofs. I uh, have. Okay. <laughs> oh, you have? No, okay. I don't think I have. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I would say that's Tech Timo, but he's not been particularly responsive. Don't know if he's on holiday or something right now. But uh, uh, let's, let's tag him. And let's put Andrew on it. Oh, LD proof. Oh, let's let's try Shandrai. He's he's worked in that code before. Okay, let's go there. And then this last one. Um, I think I we think, went through, through a first round of reviews. The yeah. May have gotten approved and then Jot pushed a new change now. Just a quick a quick fix. Okay, something. so I'll I'll update this, but have we got any approvals on it? Um uh, no. They were dismissed by his last push. Okay. Okay. So we'll some we're, we're gonna have to reapprove. Yeah. Like re-review -re and reapprove. All right, good. Okay. Sounds good. But it would be nice if we can get it yeah. in in soon because this is a big change and yeah. it's going to become stale quick. Um, these are going away. I assume we'll probably close these, but let's not spend time on that. I'm much more interested in this. So this is an awful lot of work, it looks like. <laughs> Some of it is probably a little less scary than the number implies, but uh, there's there's a number of things. Um, yeah. So first thing first is um, dealing with the stale branch and and the test that Jason Sherman was trying to put in place. So the idea we had was let's start by getting that test into the integration tests. Um, but with so much going on at Akapai itself, um, that branch is problematic. What are we, suggestions on the strategy for that? So I put in some questions that Daniel responded to last night. <laughs> it's, uh, so I was trying to get the work he had done working standalone, which is fine, it does. Um, and then all the existing tests, there's a bunch of issues with those. So I was trying to retrofit the um changes to the um, base classes and kind of push those into the new stack but unbeknownst to me or i missed <laughs> missed the memo is the that daniel's thought is that they don't live together anyway um so that the non-creds will supersede the existing schema and cred def um work which is what i was trying to like see if i can patch these things in here <laughs> so is that what we're doing? Is we're gonna just drop the existing schema cred def stuff and replace it wholly with the non-creds? Uh, that's what I understand the plan to be, yep. Um, so we're moving, deprecating the old admin API endpoints for um, schema cred def creation yeah. and replacing it with the, the non-cred specific um, or ledger agnostic and non-creds endpoints, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then at some point, <laughs> like how, how does that affect um, all the existing things such as, you know, like Ameliorano's on the call traction, right? Right. Uh, I mean, there it's just pass throughs to things, right? But if they're, they're, you know, their thought is that um, the third part, the people that are using traction are calling the Akapai endpoints. Um, and then all of a sudden those things are going to be gone. Um, and so, right. This, yeah. this would be a significant breaking change. Um, yeah. It's possible to adapt the endpoints to the exist to the new Anoncreds interface. Um, I, I think that is reasonable, um, at least for 
schema cred def, and then for the automated revocation registry setup, um, I think we could adapt those endpoints without too much trouble. Um, okay. Yeah. Where we I, might. Yeah, I think okay. that's 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 after reading your thing. I was like, oh, I didn't know. I wasn't aware of this is that <laughs> plan is we're just gonna, you know, uh, significantly shift um, Akapai so things aren't running in well parallel or whatever you want to call it. That it's yeah. So it's a very use loose use of the word deprecate. Okay, so um, the the issue is how do we do this? What is the the best way to do this? I mean, I guess what we could do just to think this out is to look at all the endpoints and say, you know, which ones truly go away, which is basically anything to do with revocation. And then which ones do we think we can keep as what amounts to redirects to the other with a, you know, with an adopter adapter in between, a shim in between to make them still work. So that's, but how much does that slow us down in actually making progress on this? Um, so if we were able to, um, so the revocation stuff is, is and always has been like the more complicated aspect of, of the anon creds transition. Sure. Um, so if we're, and we have discussed this at length, uh, if we're comfortable with removing a lot of the like manual controller does all the work uh, endpoints and um, um, in favor of the automated setup after creating a cred def with, uh, which supports revocation. Um, there are things to be changed as Jason was finding while trying to adapt those things. There are definitely things to change, but I, I think the effort to create an adapter uh, from the original inputs to the ledger agnostic Akapai or, or non-cred stuff, uh, I don't think it would be too bad. Um, yeah, that that's my feeling too, after you pointed that out is the, like, there's very similar pieces. So I don't think it's too far off. And then maybe that's the better approach is, is um, yeah, to take, leave the non-cred stuff as is and then adapt the existing um, things in place to use that new kind of model. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, yeah. Like I said, I mean, there's there a lot of similar pieces. They just didn't quite tie up, and there was a reason why they didn't quite tie up. So, um, yeah. So now we can we can kind of concentrate and, and instead of me trying to force this stuff, like, hey, this should work and this should work, is knowing that it doesn't, and figure out how to make it work. So, yeah. Yeah, like we fully want to drop any of the controller based revocation if we can keep the schema and cred def the same you know, all the other endpoints the same, then we should. Um, and minor breaking changes are okay if we feel like it. Um, but, you know, if we can, you know, as much as we can keep them the same, but um, if it starts to become a, a real hassle, then we <laughs> we may rethink this, but I, I fully, I'm fully on board with removing all of the Rev reg. I don't think anyone's using it, so I don't think it's a problem. And we just say they're gone. And if you were using them, here's a hell of a lot easier way to do it. Your controller is about to get a hell of a lot simpler. We're all good with that. How does um, so some of the existing um, proof requests and stuff either have like uh they've got like an indie block is that is that's any of that stuff that stuff's all okay yeah yeah so when the new you know anon creds was put together the key thing we wanted to keep was the interact the objects that are passed between between agents should stay the same so those should pretty much be the same they should not have changed 
So, you know, issuing a, a verifiable credential, sending a presentation request and sending a presentation, all of those things should be the same. And the, and the, um, the interactions between, uh, you know, getting an offer and so on. I definitely think we should focus on the send endpoint um, for the same reason and and at least deprecate the use of other ones. I think that would be a good idea. Daniel, you're nodding. You think that's okay? Um, so I think... I don't have a problem with that. I don't think that would be problematic either, um, uh, especially as it pertains to changes required for the non-creds interface, uh, whether it's using you know the fully automated flow from the send endpoint or if it's doing it step-by-step, step, uh, the changes to those protocols was actually, or the changes to the protocol implementations, the protocols themselves, as you say, are exactly the same as they were before, uh, but just calling the you know the anon creds folder instead of the indie holder or the anon creds verifier instead of the indie verifier it's like those that level of change is required in in the protocols at this point at the anon creds level um and then any other changes that we want to make in terms of deprecating endpoints i think is is fair game and yeah yeah um yeah the only thing that i think that we Well, okay, maybe not. I, I was going to say the only thing I think we lose is the ability to like interrupt the protocol and say, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, exactly. But, yeah. but I, I think that's, I don't know how common that is, anyways. Um, and we still have the ability to send a problem report, but it would have to be triggered by, you know, a, a rules engine being evaluated on the controller side as it received webhooks or something. And it would have to be, it would have to interrupt before ActPy was able to go through with the last steps of the issuance or something. But I don't know. I'm not sure what conditions there would be in place in order to say, hey, I sent you an offer, but I'm not okay with sending you a, a request or, or issuing, or not a request, with the actual issue credential message. So Okay, so let me put it this way. Um, we leave that as an option and we consider putting into the notes saying, uh, we would like to move to send. <laughs> um, but having said that, um, we try to uh, we try to avoid that in this step. So the revocation registry ones without a doubt go away. And we're all good with that. Um, if we get into problems with the the back and forth with issuing, um, our next strategy would be to consider dropping the other than the send. But let's let's see if we are forced into that. Just a matter of interest, um, Jason and Jason, in the work you've done, have you, do you have you done an issuer and and do you use the send? Um, yeah, so most of the stuff and, and, you know, Milano can chime in if it's changed, but when, when we, when we were writing our own controller for traction, the bulk of the work was listening to the webhook messages and trying to evaluate like, oh, hey, this is, this isn't right. Let's stop the flow there. So it was kind of basically starting everything with the automated flows and then trying to interrupt if there was some kind of condition or if someone had put in some logic or whatever. Um, and I think it's similar stuff in traction is, is use the automated flows and then okay. inter interrupt, you know, just like as Daniel saying, is basically someone's going to put something in that's going to be business flow rules engines or something that says, Hey, this isn't quite right. Let's stop this. Um, but like everything kind of gets kicked off automated ish. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so we've got that from a philosophical. So we have two problems and we don't have much time left to discuss. So maybe we have to get back together. I don't know. But one is um, dealing with the, the, the stale branch. And the second is how do we order and distribute the work 
Um, Daniel, I don't know if Indicio has resources for this. Um, uh, I would characterize our availability uh, to help address this as here and there. It's sometimes we've got a little bit more time than others. Um, uh, I would have some time, I think, to like help update the branch. But I think the bigger problem on that front is that the, the changes that Andrew made on the Indy side are not yet available on the non-creds RS side. Um, That's so like, okay. Yeah. That's so, a, that's a pending merge. I mean, it, the work's been done. It just needs to be merged. In a non-creds RS? Yeah. Okay. So I've there's an outstanding, there. yeah, there's an outstanding PR in a non-creds RS um, that Akif did and is ready to go. Okay. Okay. Um, the biggest thing here is I have no clue what the ordering is on these. Like if we have one person, where do they start? If we have two people, which two places? If we have three people, which three places do we start? That's the question. Yeah. Um, so I would say, Daniel, that's the biggest thing you could help us with is sort of just look at these and say, okay, if, I, if it was me, here's the order I would do it in. Yeah. Um, um, are Keith's changes, so that's at the Rust library level, I guess, Daniel, I haven't looked at them, but it probably doesn't substantively change the work that you did, I wouldn't imagine. No. Um, the, so Andrew did a change to Akapai when he put CredX in. Yeah. So that when I tried to do like a, I was just trying to do a quick kind of merge between main and the non-Creds RS branch. And, you know, because it was so, so isolated, there really was only like the base ledger class and um the revocation registry class and yeah there was so andrew had put in the stuff there which i was like uh oh this might be a problem <laughs> um yeah. that i'd leave for you guys so but overall yeah those were the two areas um yeah. but, but i was just gonna say that it, it, if the work that daniel did in akapai won't really change too much there's the, still that the bridging exercise of what's there and the current um, schema cred dev stuff could get worked on so it, like in preparation for like, hey, this is how we're going to transition um, these APIs. Um, so like that could get done and probably wouldn't be impacted by any of the other changes. Um, and it's work that needs to be done, I guess, if we're going to if we're going to go that way to keep these things kind of alive at the same time, I think. Um, just to understand where what you've done as we wrap up, Daniel, your team, you implemented the Anon Creds API endpoints. Yes. Yes. So we literally have the Indie endpoints or the you know the schema and the cred def endpoints that exist. We have the Anon Creds endpoint. And so an exercise needs to be done is to cross-check those and see which ones are going to be problems and how we might deal with them. And then, and then just for fun, we've got the changes that Andrew's done, which is going to remove parameters and add parameters. I mean, they're they're relatively simple. I wrote them down yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. on so issuing, on issuing, the tails file is no longer needed. On revocation, the tails file is not needed, and the cred def and rev private key, rev reg private key are needed. Those are the only differences. Right. Yeah. So those should be, and so they're only to do with issuing and um, issuing and and revoking credentials. So those should be embedded anyway. So those won't be a problem for the interface. Okay. So all we've got to do is let's compare those APIs and and see what we can do about keeping the old ones and which ones would be a problem. Okay. I think the, um, uh, the, the next like kind of big thing is the migration from existing objects to the agnostic objects. Okay. Um, 
I, I'm actually really excited about the changes for the non creds RS library and the and the changes that Andrew made in the Indie Credits. I think they they actually simplify things in a really good way. Um, so it, it it won't it won't appear at like the the admin API level certainly, uh, but underneath in the non creds interface, there's there's a whole load of things that we can actually simplify significantly and all the no longer needing to manage tails files locally also solves yeah. a number of previously existing problems so I, I think those are all, all going to be really positive changes but those can be kind of done piecemeal as we add in the uh, as we merge in the library and you know pull it in as a dependency the updated version um, I get it that is a significant change. You no longer have to keep the tails files around. That is significant. Yeah. Okay. Well, we filled up an hour. Um, all right. Um, so I, I had a, a couple of things that I, I wanted to bring up. We don't have a ton of time. Uh, so the only one that I think that's that I really want to Yes. Bring to your attention live is um, so we've made some changes to the Indie Tales server yeah. Yeah. in order to support the non creds uh, changes. And yeah. we're actually unable to create a PR to the VCGov Indie Tales server project. We have to be collaborators in order to open a PR to the project, apparently. Um, surely we can fix that. I can take a look quickly. Okay. That must have been some over. Underside, oversight, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I meant to do that before the start of this. Okay, that one can be done. Anything else? Um, I mean, I'm interested in talking more, but uh, I, they can wait. Yeah. Uh, um, do you want to have another meeting <laughs> this week? I'm open to that. Um, uh, and happy to talk a little bit more in depth about any of the issues on the non cred stack. Um, I can also spend some time prioritizing, I suppose, like uh, g giving a suggested, like, here's probably what should be done first, here's what can wait, kind of uh, ordering to those tasks, and and uh, yeah, can answer questions there. Um, and then the other things I had are, are mostly like a kind of a high level, what are our views on like open ID for VCI uh, from the Actify yeah. context and stuff, yeah. so. Okay, um, I might set up another meeting for Thursday, if you don't mind. And uh, let's see see if we can do that. Yeah, Thursday will, Thursday will work for me. I've got, got time, so. We're often in, um, we get together on Thursday, so it's, we can actually be in person um, for our team and then um, include you and anyone else that needs to. Sure. Okay. All right. Sorry to run. Good meeting. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Yeah.